There it is, the tree of life. The idea that all life is related by common descent. Where the twigs are existing species and those produced in the past represent the succession of the extinct. The tree's great branches were once budding twigs, a connection between the past, present and future. A representation of all extinct and living species with its ever-branching and beautiful ramifications. We are an evolution of those that came before. Scrap's great for building things. Let's see. It's a place well hidden. It's just below the above. The underworld is like a whole new frontier. Out of dates impressed you made it this far, but there's still so much left to do. The end of the world is still on everyone's minds. Mpa, wherefore, where where? You've beaten a path where you have the power to destroy or save everyone. Question is, what you'll do with that responsibility? He can sense that your heart beats steadily and acknowledges that the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. Thinks it's important that you remember who you are and where you came from. Someone without knowledge of their history and origin is like a tree without roots. He promises he'll be there for you. Just come talk to him beneath the tree if you're feeling lost. But the what? Out of date says there's a time for everything. And now there's no use thinking of the past, for it's gone. 
Kim Hobe, Bekuku, Hivar, Muk. Think of the present because that's where you are. It's time to set your priorities as the one who completes things. My job. If you continue to do good, good will follow you. Oloi Bobo Paweg. If the world really does end, there won't be anywhere to run. So he's prepared for the worst. Something he calls the Ark. Maumauya. Two sides to everything, but for him it would be devastating if you were forced to use the Ark to escape while the world crumbled. Luatoluntum. Out of date says there's no clear record of the chain of events that changed the course of history and brought the world to its knees. Vunko Vuntu. He's found evidence on the Ark. Records of a crisis. Decades of contamination that permeated the ground and broke its inner core. A contamination disrupted what we now know as key energy, the life force that runs through all things, living and inanimate. Yeah, He's been told the blight affected everything at a genetic level and turned our perception of normality on its head. Come, Reaper. It was only those that changed that avoided extinction, proving that the possibility for survival and renewal was real. He understands you are curious about the ship at the foot of the tree. He says it surfaced when the oil broke through the ground. The Ark predates the back-in days, and now, after years of study of the manuals he found inside, he believes he's figured the ship out. The Ark has room for four more, and he trusts you'll apply wisdom to your compassion and choose whom to save if the world comes to end. He'll keep the seats open and you are free to invite up to four others to join you in the Ark in the event of a cataclysm. Out of date says that from what he's heard, you've been busy. He says he appreciates what you've done so far, but unfortunately he's got urgent news from his friend Gizmo in the West. Out of date says that even though he's unsure about your intentions, he hopes you'll support Gizmo. He says he'll point you in the right direction. But finding Gizmo and making sure he gets what he needs is up to you. That doesn't sound good. Out of date's forebodings are justified. The Jumbo Puff needs to be taken care of. Out of date says that Gizmo is worried now that the Western World Eater is stepping up its activity. He explains that Gizmo is working on a scrapwalker vessel in order to get to the World Eater, but needs help to get it done. Out of date suggests that you should head west as fast as possible and see what you can do to help. He wonders what's on your mind. Muk Bebuk. He says you really need to go see Gizmo as soon as possible. Tolu Keta, ya wawanawe. He wonders what's on your mind. Yuba Tolu Waiwai says you're welcome back.
A day in the forest is as pleasant as you could wish. Easy to get lost here. Chug yard. Need a key? Oh, it's locked. The sun is coming up fast. The board mainly has posts from those that used to work at the chug yard back in the days gone. They don't make much sense these days. Not much more to say about the board, but Gizmo is holed up in the under yard here working on that mecton of his. 
The Toxanol Corporation used to run chugger chuggers out of here, big machines on rails with smokestacks that fouled the air. They can carry you anywhere you like, well, anywhere that they go to, and then you can leg it from there. You're on the right track. Keep your eyes open. Tribes always stop and to scrap, and the yard has plenty to go around. But they should have stopped to look instead of playing around with sprockets. You need to believe how serious this is if you want to have any effect on it. Let's see. anything. The sky's the limit. Now, let's take this back to Earth. Wow, you really took that all the way down to the end. In flames. It's a wonder some of these up and downs still work. Guess they built machines better in the past. The spent nuclear fuel that Toxanol dumped in the surf had detrimental effects on the marine habitats, while the overflowing landfills contaminated the groundwater. Combined, this sent their world hurtling on an inevitable road to ruin. Better get a move on if you want to change things. I need to brush up on my Wando, but I have a feeling he believes it was you that caused the bang at the yard. Pardon? Oh. oh, and he says he knows you. You used to call him Gizmo. He gave you the oil-greased hands when he taught you how to upcycle. Don't know. Gizmo remembers you as a nice kidling, and he can still sense the warmth of your good heart. But Gizmo says how you experience a memory can be different. You know the story, but sometimes the truth it brings is personal. Okay. He hopes you remember that one time he taught you to upcycle and hopes you've had some use for it over the years. 
He understands history made Loopa Loop in a big part of your past, your present, and soon, your future. You still believe there's some good in everyone. You still have hope for tomorrow. He says you should know that what's meant to be will always find a way, but history shouldn't consume you. Gizmo understands you still have strong feelings, but urges you to keep them under control. You've witnessed firsthand what it'll lead to. See? On my side. Go, Dark, go! Only the Dark speaks in absolutes. Well, not only. Oh, get snuffed, Light. Let the light shine! Light eventually burns out. Just saying. Sad to see the Tree of Life is going to die and take everything with it, but it's not like he didn't expect it. <laughs> Grateful to you for coming back and doing your best to change things, you were the only chance they had. Fruit drink typo. Wonders if you liked working with the Jagni. They always hunker down in their homes, gathering their things around them. <laughs> but that's not important now. Fruit drink typo. Gizmo says it's taken a long time to bring the past up to the present. And where you go from here is up to you. You need to set the past aside, at least for now. Oh, he can't leave the Underyard as he has no protection against the vacuum in the dead zone. So you need to salvage scrap to upcycle the Mecton, starting with the old crate outside. You should return when you've retrieved the scrap. There's no time to waste if you want to make the Mecton strong enough to fight the Dreamscar. There are more crates from before the apocalypse left out in the wild. Easy to find if you keep an eye out. You should be able to gather enough scrap to upgrade the Mecton from them. They're short of breath and death to this zone. Better take care. He who half breathes, half lives. That's the leftover you're looking for. Underworld critters are meaner than anything. Nice and steady. Just keep us. Let gravity help.
you need to line up the switches so they match. Good. That's enough electric current to initiate the actuators and activate the framework. He says that's enough to get the Mekton functional. You'll have an engine, a fuel soaker, a gun and a gathering net, but no armor, nor enough oxygen supply. He made a suction device so the Mekton can use the black tar as an instant refuel. You can also use it to clear oily goo puddles so you can pass and access hard to get to areas. He's been working on another project for the Mekton, a cannon, but it needs ammunition, and by that he means the scripts. He says if they're trained right, they'll turn into a distraction for the Jumbo Puff. <laughs> the best way to find scripts is to go talk to Moog. He knows the ins and outs of every breathing thing left alive after the apocalypse. Unfortunately, this means you'll have to venture farther out into the dead zone than Moog's camp on the steep depot. Once you... Gizmo thinks he's a little peculiar, but very knowledgeable. He has the ins and outs of all monster and creature whereabouts. This monkey's Mekton is built sturdy, just like himself. Can you imagine how this place used to look before the dead oil flood? Might want to hold your breath before you head any further. You're about to witness the breathtaking vistas of what's known as the dead zone. The struggle is real. In the old world, roads like this really led somewhere. Now, most of them lead to disaster. Over there is Steepo Deepo, the cliffside that you hangs on to. Some places a Mekton just can't go. Good. 
Você in Mo Tiava. Strong up. Let's see. Und This one's impressed to see you out here. He figured you'd be dead by now. Not many are as tough and clever as you must be. Claims he goes after the most dangerous game, huge monsters. Moog says that all your power doesn't do you a bit of good if you're not willing to pull the trigger when the time comes. Choosing what to kill and what to spare are the most important decisions you'll make. You might have a steady aim, but you need to be sure that you pick your targets with care. It's hard to make those life or death decisions for others, but someone's got to do it. Otherwise, the claims he mostly kills whoever he doesn't like. Worries that when the world dies, there won't be any monsters left. What will he shoot then? Wonders why you work so hard to keep things alive. Bullets help thin the herd instead. Approves of you working with the Jagni. They have the hunting spirits of a flock of hawks. Mostly they don't actually haunt. They just help spot monsters for him. But enough of that, right? He says the wildlife, nature, has changed and turned against us. Instincts of survival took over when the world changed. Some. He's not sure about their veggie diet anymore. And if it's changed, who knows what it's done with the chemical composition of their body output. Right now, though, he feels he's come to a point where he's got a pretty clear idea on the whereabouts of monsters, both tall Amanka. says as big as they are, the world is bigger. To find where they are, you need to see where they've been. Moog says you must learn to walk before you can run. It takes practice before you can call yourself a monster hunter. Fortunately for you, he can help. He understands you need to start off with something small before you go big. There's no better place to start than a squip cave. Hunting down a couple of these little critters for yourself should keep you on your toes. Says you stick to the haunting and shots present themselves later. <laughs> 